2022 had no shortage of great RPG releases. We got some real masterpieces this past year, and Square Enix put out exactly 986 brand new RPGs in the past few months alone, which I'm sure you've all definitely played. As good as this year was, I honestly think next year is going to be even better for RPG fans. There's really a ton of new releases to look forward to on the horizon. So for today's video, I thought I'd talk about my top 10 most anticipated RPGs of 2023. Let's begin. So we're starting off the list with Fire Emblem Engage, and yes, the main character does look like one of those fruit roll-ups your mom packed for you in her lunch. But overall, it looks like it's going to be a good tactical RPG experience. This is a great franchise. I enjoyed Three Houses, and I'm expecting this one to be high quality as well. You can do things like hang out with other characters and give them gifts, and you can give people literal horse shit, so I'm really looking forward to doing that. There's loads of other side content they're adding. You can go fishing, cook food, you can exercise while wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt, even though these games are supposed to take place in the medieval times, and you can even have your own farm. Bring lots of animals to their forever home, and you might be rewarded. It also looks like they decided to resort to nostalgia bait by including characters of 30-year-old games that nobody even played. And there's a $30 season pass announced before the game even released, so I can only assume they're getting Ubisoft to help out with this one. This franchise is pretty much the best when it comes to tactical RPGs, and anyone with a fix for that kind of game will need to keep their eye on this one. Next up is Atelier Ryza 3, better known by the gaming masses as Peak Fiction the Video Game. The Atelier franchise was never very popular until the first Ryza game came out and sold over half a million copies. And then they made a sequel, and that one did just as well, so now of course they're making a third one because obviously there's something about this game that's clicking with mainstream audiences. So why are these games so popular? What is it that draws people in? Well, I can only assume it's because everyone is so passionate about alchemy. Yes, this game has very deep alchemy mechanics, and I am looking forward to this game for its highly sophisticated plot and lore. Atelier Ryza has one of the most profound, complex, and introspective narratives in gaming, and this serves as the main reason why people like it. This game will make you reevaluate your entire life. This game is only for extremely cultured and worldly gentlemen. You have to wear monocle while playing this game. That's how avant-garde this game is. I think I speak for everyone when I say that this will be a truly generation-defining game and should be on everyone's list for next year. Now to the next game, but before we do that, I need to talk about the sponsor for today's video, which I'm sure you're all thrilled to hear from. Yup, that's right, this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, I bet you never thought you'd hear me say that. Raid is a free-to-play MMORPG with over 80 million players worldwide, which is kind of impressive because there's only 8 million people on the planet, so I don't even know how they pulled that one off. Today I'm going to really quickly tell you the top 3 Raid characters just based on how they look and nothing else. Number 3 is Harvest Jack. This dude has a pumpkin for a head, and... Well, he has a pumpkin for a head, so obviously he is one of the best design characters in the entire game. This is a very brilliant character design. Very impressive. Number two is the Earth Sign Ice Crusher. He is a polar bear that walks around and he wears pants. So this is obviously one of the best characters in the whole game, clearly. Number one is Sir Nicholas. Yes, they literally put Santa Claus in this game. You can fight monsters and demons as Santa Claus. Isn't that amazing? This is already the best character hands down. So yeah, the game currently has a Christmas event going on right now, the 12 Days of Raid. This is for all new players this Christmas. To join in, download Raid Shadow Legends, copy your player ID from in-game, and then visit the link in the description below. You can set out on a fun festive adventure the last 12 days run from December 19th to January 10th. You can also play a new mini game for the chance to win some amazing in-game and real-life prizes, including holiday-themed Raid Champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. There's also a legendary champion based on MMA legend Ronda Rousey, which you can get for free right now if you log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th. Be sure to enter promo code RAIDRONDA in-game for some extra goodies too. And if you haven't started Raid yet, scan the QR code right here to get $30 worth of unique bonuses for new players only. We're talking a free epic champion Aina, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 AXP boost, and 1 engine shard. So you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here in your inbox. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video, now back to the ranking. Coming up next is Project Octopath Traveler 2. Yes, that's right, Square Enix is making a sequel to Octopath before Dragon Quest 3 HD2D Remake. Shocking, I know. Look, I like these HD2D games a lot. This is genuinely the best thing Square Enix has come up with in a long time, so it's no wonder they're returning to the game that started it all. In this new one, you guide 8 different characters on a brand new adventure, but the most important addition in this game is that you now have day and night abilities, and your night abilities let you do bad things. For example, you can bribe people, steal things, and you can even mug people in the street. That is just nuts. JRPGs usually have you play as a goody two-shoes who can do no wrong, so the fact that they let you roleplay as a bad guy and let you knock out random NPCs and steal their things is honestly really cool and unexpected coming from this genre, and it makes me way more interested in playing this game, so I'm definitely going to check this one out. The next game is Labyrinth of Galleria The Moon Society. Yes, it's a first-person anime dungeon crawler, very original, I know but I've actually heard good things about this one. It's basically a sequel to the game Labyrinth of Refrain that came out a while back, and it's finally getting localized next year for Switch, PlayStation, and PC. It's apparently over 50 hours long, and it's supposed to have a really good story and characters. I'm going to have the two of you do some exploring. 
Huh? Did you say... Exploring? Yes, that's literally what she just said. Supposedly the dungeons in this game are very well designed. There's also some roguelike elements and a huge emphasis on exploration. This game also has a ton of customization too. You know, I just like these kinds of games. I think they have their own charm to them. They're usually quite fun and the art is always nice. I'm honestly really interested in this game and I can't wait to give it a try when it comes out. Alright, so the next game is the Suikoden 1 and 2 remasters and... Wow, I can't believe this is even happening quite honestly. If you don't know, Suikoden is one of the best turn-based role-playing game franchises of all time, and it's owned by Konami of all companies, so naturally, it has been lost to time for years. Frankly, I'm just amazed that they're doing something that doesn't involve pachinko machines for once. This game is going to be an absolute must-play for anyone who likes RPGs. Suikoden 1 and 2 were defining RPGs for the PS1. They played good, they looked good, you could recruit over 100 different party members, and this remaster is really doing the originals justice. It has revamped graphics, but still maintains the original game's art style perfectly, with the same sprites and everything, something that Square Enix seems to never understand when they port their older games to modern consoles. This is going to be insane, and I really hope the games turn out good, because I've wanted to see the series come back for a very long time. Next is Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. Yes, I consider this to be an RPG. The first Stalker was so open-ended and had so much customization that I think it fits the bill for our role-playing experience. Stalker 2 is a long-awaited first-person horror adventure game taking place in a Chernobyl-inspired zone full of mutants and misfits to fight. The original game was a really awesome and scary experience. It was also very difficult, just a totally unique experience that I would easily recommend to anyone, and ever since I discovered it, I've been waiting for the sequel for so long. This game has been delayed again and again and again, but hopefully 2023 will be the year we finally see it. Just from the bits of gameplay we've seen as well as considering how good the original game was, I definitely have high hopes for this one. Alright, after that we have the Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake. Yup, I do think it's coming in 2023. It has to at this point. The game was announced about two years ago and it feels like we've been waiting forever. Honestly, I am so excited for this to finally release so we can stop speculating about it. Dragon Quest 3 is one of the best games in the Dragon Quest series. It is an open-ended, open-world adventure where you make any kind of party you want and tackle all the game's objectives in any order. It was wildly ambitious for its time, and there hasn't been an RPG quite like it since. I'm hoping they add new content to the game to freshen things up for longtime fans, but really, I'm just excited to return to this familiar RPG that I've already poured tons of hours into and play it in a brand new way. Okay, so next I have Project RE Fantasy. Chances are you've probably never even heard of this one. I really don't blame you. It's been in development since 2016, and so far we have not seen any gameplay at all. Just some artwork and a weird live action trailer that doesn't really show us anything. So why am I excited about this game? Well, it's being made by Alice's Studio Zero, the team behind the Persona series. So you know it's going to be good just based on that alone. I'm being optimistic and guessing that it will release during 2023, since Persona 6 is obviously not happening. As far as what I'm expecting from the game, well, it's a medieval fantasy game by the creators of Persona. So it might be like a medieval Persona, and yeah, that it sounds amazing. This could very well be one of the best RPGs of all time if they pull it off right. I'm going to buy that day one. This game is going to be huge, I can already tell. Hopefully development is still going on and we'll see it sometime this year. For the next game, we have Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes. This game is a spiritual successor to the Suikoden series by the original creators of Suikoden, and I'd like to think that the game's enormous Kickstarter success was what made Konami get out their asses and announce the Suikoden remasters to ride the hype. This game is in the HD2D art style like Octopath, and it just looks awesome, honestly. Fans have wanted to return to the Suikoden series for years, and this looks like the closest thing we'll get to a real sequel. This game looks like a great old-school turn-based RPG with over 100 playable characters you can recruit into your party. It looks like everything Suikoden fans have wanted all these years and more. I am super excited to jump into this and I have very high expectations. And for my number one most anticipated RPG of 2023, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, I always consider Breath of the Wild to be an RPG because it has every aspect of an RPG I personally look at. Like character growth, non-linearity, customization, a sense of adventure, all that stuff. In short, this game is going to be sick. You know it, I know it, there's no two ways about it. Breath of the Wild was one of the best open world experiences in gaming. People still talk about it all these years later, and this new game is taking that same immersive world and building onto it. They've been working on this game for years, and my expectations are through the roof right now. I'm expecting this game to reignite that same sense of adventure and discovery that the first game gave us, while fixing all the little flaws that were present, giving us a near-perfect experience. When you've been waiting for a sequel to such a good game that long, your imagination can only begin to expect crazy things, and I'm expecting a big world with a ton of things to do. If this game can live up to the hype, it will be something very special. So yeah, that was my top 10 most anticipated RPGs of 2023. There's a lot of games on my radar next year, but those are just the ones that interested me the most. What upcoming RPGs are you looking for to next year? 
Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.